Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Maths. In this video, let's discuss about how to analyze the truss using methods of joints. By the end of this video, you will be able to know how to draw free body diagram for a truss, free body diagram for each joint and how do we calculate the forces at each joint. There are few important points to remember while calculating the forces using methods of joints. Let me explain you everything clearly in this video. So without any delay, let's begin. First, let's consider a simple triangle truss which is is having three joints and three members. Whenever we need to calculate the forces at each joint, a truss should satisfy the equilibrium condition. There are two major factors we should remember. The first one is to draw the free body diagram of the truss and the second one is we should draw the free body diagram of each joint. So first let me explain here what is the free body diagram of a truss. So when the load is applied here, there are two support reactions. One is RA and one is RB. So the truss should satisfy the equilibrium equations summation of fx is equal to 0, summation of fy that is vertical forces is equal to 0. This one represents the horizontal forces and summation of moment is equal to 0. Since the truss will not have any bending moment, this automatically satisfies. So we need to check for horizontal forces and vertical forces. This is very important. We should make sure that this truss is satisfying these two equilibrium equations. Since this triangle has no horizontal force, so we need to check only for the summation of Fy that is vertical forces is equal to zero. So first we should draw a free body diagram of the truss and solve the reaction forces using equilibrium equation. So these two are the reaction forces and this we need to solve by using this equilibrium equations. And as I told you before, Next, we need to calculate the free body diagram of each joint. Why we need to draw the free body diagram of each joint? We need to solve the internal forces acting at each joint. We need to solve the unknown forces acting at each joint using the equilibrium equation. So here you should remember that like in a previous case, we are calculating the reaction forces. In this case, we are going to calculate the unknown forces acting at each joint. So this one you have to keep it in mind and next remember that we are calculating the forces acting at each joint not forces in the member. This is also very very important point you should remember we are not calculating the forces in the member we are calculating the forces in each joint of the truss. The next question is yes, it is correct we are calculating forces in the joint not in the member. How do we consider the member like whether it is a tension member or compression member how do we consider the uh, member. So whenever the pulling forces are acting on the member we call it as a tension and whenever the pushing forces are acting in the member we call it as a compression. This you all know very well. So as per Newton's law for every action there will be an equal and opposite reaction. If a member is in tension that will exert a force on the joint which is acting away from the joint. For example, consider this member is having the tension forces and consider this is the joint for this member. If a member is in tension that will exert a force on the joint which is acting away from the joint. So you can uh, easily remember this. If the member is in tension, the opposite force will act at the joint. Okay. So here this force is acting away from the joint in the opposite direction of this member forces. So this is, this is for tension. Similarly, if a member is in compression, that will exert a force on joint which is acting towards the joint. So this is the compression force which is acting on the member. If this is the case that will exert a force on the joint which is acting towards the joint. So this is the concept behind the member forces. Okay. Let me repeat one second. If a member is in tension that will exert a force on the joint which is acting away from the joint. If a member is in compression that will exert a force on the joint which is acting towards the joint. We never know which members are in tension and which members are in compression. We can assume that all of the members are in tension and let's draw the internal forces are pointing away from each joint. 
first let's consider joint a so joint a is having member one member here so this is tension member so that is why we are taking the forces away from joint which is acting away from the joint similarly we have one member which is connecting the joint a and c that is also in tension and uh, we are taking this forces internal forces which is acting away from the joint so we need to find out fab fba fac fc okay by using equilibrium equation we need to find out all these internal forces so now we have assumed all the numbers are in tension so how do we know whether our assumption is correct or not so after calculating the internal forces if we end up with negative values for this forces it means that our assumption was not correct and the member is actually in compression so here we have to keep this one in mind if we get the results like the forces which are in negative values that means that our assumption is not correct then the member is actually in compression so from this we can come to know if we get the negative values that is compression and if we get the positive value that is tension similarly like joint a we have assumed joint b also as a tension member so joint b has two members which is connecting a and one is connecting a and one is connecting c so these two members are in tension tension joint forces are acting away from the similarly joint c has two members which is connecting a and b so this is also in tension so the forces are acting away from the joint you have to keep it in mind that negative value is compression and positive value is tension after calculating the forces we will come to know if we get the negative value then the member is in compression and if we get the positive value then the member is in tension the members carry only axial force so we need to find out the magnitude of forces we will not be knowing whether the force is compressive or tensile and here we should remember that we are calculating the forces at each joint not the member force so since we need to draw the free body diagram the direction of forces has to be assumed since the joint force and member force are opposite to the direction the two forces must cancel out each other if we rejoin the member ac to joint a the sum of internal forces must vanish for the entire truss to be in equilibrium each segment must be in equilibrium equilibrium equations are satisfied for each member segment since the two force vector shown in each segment cancel each other that is the sum is equal to zero there are three equilibrium equation as i told you before summation of fx is equal to zero summation of fy is equal to zero summation of moment is equal to zero since there is no bending moment and shear force acting on the free body diagram the moment equilibrium equation is automatically satisfied so we need to check whether other two equations are satisfied or not that is horizontal forces and vertical force so this is the major important points you should remember while doing the calculation of internal forces by using methods of joints next let's move on to the problem the truss abc has a span of 6 meter and is carrying load of 20 km at its apron so this is the truss which is having 20 km load the span of the truss is 6 meter so first we need to calculate the unknown forces the unknown forces are ra and rb as i told you before first we are calculating the reaction forces ra and rb for that we need to use the equilibrium equation summation of vertical forces is equal to zero here we are not using another two equilibrium equations since the truss has no bending moment the bending moment equation is automatically satisfied and here we don't have horizontal forces as well so we don't need to use summation of horizontal forces is equal to zero so let's calculate the reaction forces here ra plus rb is equal to zero so this is the summation of vertical forces here we have the vertical force is 20 kN. so we should equate the unknown forces is equal to the external force that is 20 kN. So for that we need to take the moment about a and equating the c ra plus rb which is equal to 20 kN. Newton. So we are taking what about A, Rb into 6 which is equal to 20 into 1.5 so that is 30 kilonewton. 
so we get rb value as 5 km so from this we can find out the ra value which is 15 km so now we know the unknown forces ra and rb rb is 5 km and ra is 15 km so the sum is equal to 20 km so this is how we need to find out the reaction forces next let's consider joint a so here resolving the forces vertically and equating the same that is summation of v is equal to 0 so first we need to take the reaction force ra this is one vertical force and then plus fac sin 60 so let me explain you why this sin 60 we need to consider here before that, let me tell you about the sign conversion. This is positive x and positive y, negative x and negative y. We need to use the sign conversion to calculate these internal forces. Here we need to remember the basic trigonometry. Let's consider this as a triangle. So this is FAC and this one is FAB and this vertical one is FBC. So if we take sign 60, then FBC divided by FAC. Sin 60 will become FBC divided by FAC. So, if we calculate FBC that is equal to FAC sin 60. So, that is what we are taking here. Instead of FBC, this vertical force, we are applying it as FAC sin 60. So, if we solve this, we get minus 17.32 km. As I told you before, we get negative value here. So, whatever the member we have assumed is not correct. So, that member is in compression actually. But we have assumed as a tension member. So, this is how we need to find out which member is in tension, which member is in compression after calculating the internal forces. Next, at joint A, we are going to resolve the forces horizontally and equating the same. That means, like summation of horizontal forces are equal to 0. So, here horizontal force on FAB plus FAC cos 60. So, let me explain you. So, here horizontal forces are FAB plus FAC cos 60 is equal to 0. Let me explain you why we need to consider cos 60 here. We are also the basic trigonometry. Let's consider this one as a triangle. So, if we take cos 60 that is FAB divided by FAC. So, this FAC we are solving in terms of FAB. So this one we are resolving in terms of FAB. So that is why we need to consider cos 60. So FAB is equal to FAC cos 60. So instead of this one we are applying FAC cos 60. We know already FAC value which is minus 17.32. So that we have to apply here and we need to find out the FAB. This internal force we need to find out here. So here FAB we are getting as 8.66 kN. So here we are getting positive value. So from this we can come to know this number is in tension. So whatever we have assumed is correct. The member AC is in compression since we get the value is negative but the member AB is in tension since we get the value is in positive. Next, consider joint B resolving the forces vertically and equating the same that is summation of vertical forces are equal to 0 that is RB plus FBC sin 30 is equal to 0. RB is, we know the value, RB is 5 km. So, here why we need to consider sin 30. Let's take this one as a triangle and then we take sin 30 that is FAC divided by FBC. So, FBC sin 30 is equal to FAC. So, instead of FAC, we are going to apply FBC sin 30. We know the value, RB value is 5 plus FBC sin 30. So, from this we can come to know the FBC value is minus 10 which is compression. So, as I told you before, we got the minus value here. So, whatever we have assumed for this member BC, which is not correct. So, this member is in not in tension, which is in compression. Next, let's resolve the horizontal forces and equating the same at joint B. So, FBA plus FBC cos 30 is equal to 0. FBA, FBC, FAC. So, here if we take cos 30, that is FBA divided by FBC. So, FBC cos 30 is equal to FBA. We need to find out this one FBA value. So, we know FBC which is already calculated that is minus 10 cos 30 is equal to 0. So, if we calculate 
FBE is which is 8.66 kN that is in tension. We have already calculated FAB so that is matching with this FBA. So that member is in tension. So now we have calculated all the internal forces at each joint. We know the value of FAB that is AB and AC and BC. So let's tabulate the values like this. So member is AB. AC, BC, we have three members. Magnitude of forces AB is 8.66 km and AC is 17.32 km, BC is 10 km. So, this member we got the positive value. For AC, we got negative value so that is compression, and BC also negative value that is also in compression. So, let's see how we need to rearrange the member forces. So, AB is in tension, so we no need to change that one. So this one AC, here we got the negative value, so that is why, see this, this member is in compression and the force which, which is acting towards the joint. So since it is a compression member, so the force is acting towards the joint. Similarly, if you take joint B, here also we get negative value for BC. So that is why the force is acting towards the joint. So if you take joint C also, so this member is in compression AC and this member CB is also in compression. So negative means compression, negative value means compression, positive value means tension. So friends, I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box. Your comments are always welcome. And don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.